In this video, we're going to take you through the alerts options in WordFence Security. There's only a few to go through and they're all pretty straightforward, so this should be pretty easy for anyone who wants to make some changes here to understand. The first is if you'd like to receive an email every time WordFence is automatically updated. For this to occur, you do need to have an email address configured for alerts to be sent to, and you'll also need to have this box right here checked. That means whenever a new version of WordFence is released, you'll actually get that automatically updated for you. We've discussed why you may or may not want to do that in the past. Uh, the reasons for doing that is that you're very confident in the plugin and happy to receive updates as you go. If you would prefer not to do that, it may be because uh, you prefer to check plugins, uh, check the code that's actually been changed per release just to make sure that there'll be no incompatibilities with your current website. So yeah, if you're using the ability where you can automatically update, I'd suggest turning this on just so that you do have a notification each time that goes through. The next two are regarding alerts when there are critical problems and warnings to report. These are enabled by default. I strongly recommend leaving them on so that when things start to go wrong on your website, you do get some notifications of that. The next option is to receive an alert when an IP address is locked out. This is another one of those options that's pretty handy to have. If your site is coming under attack, you'll probably get quite a few emails saying uh, certain IP addresses are trying to access your website and have consequently been blocked uh, by trying to do it too much too often. And then you can take action against them as you see fit. The next option is to receive an alert when someone is locked out from logging into the website. So whether it's a legitimate account that's trying to gain access and whether it's the actual account owner or someone else trying to gain access to the account, it's going to let you know uh, that someone has been locked out. Again, on by default, leave it on. The next option is if you want to receive an alert when the lost password function is used. Now, hopefully most people that are using your website are not going to forget their passwords, even if it is a super complicated password. Uh, but it's pretty handy to have this feature on because you never know when someone's trying to really gain access to your website uh, for ill intent. So best to leave that one on as well. The next option is a particularly interesting option. It's to receive alerts whenever someone with administrator access signs in. Hopefully only you or maybe only one or two people are going to have admin access and you'll have a pretty good idea of when they're going to be logging in, especially if it's you. So in the instance that maybe you've got too many administrators or more than you feel comfortable with, it's strongly advised leaving this on so that you do have some coverage of that. Next, you can choose to be alerted when a non-administrator user signs in. It's not turned on by default, probably because it's not super useful, but if you were looking to get an idea of when certain people are logging in, that's when I'd be using it. And it's really up to you if you wanna use that though, of course. The final option in the alerts configuration is the maximum email alerts to send per hour. Now, zero means unlimited. It means it can send as many as it can possibly generate in that set period of time. It just means that on a regular day, depending on how many users are on your website, uh, you may get no emails, you may get a ton of emails. But it also conversely means that on a high use day or a day when your website is under attack, you're gonna get a ton of emails, which I personally feel is pretty useful to get. Uh, as we've mentioned earlier, the more information you have, the more you can actually do to protect your website. So I'd say leave that to zero unless you're truly getting an unfathomable amount of emails and you just don't want to get those. So that's all we need to cover for the alerts configuration in WordFence Security. Pretty straightforward. Uh, even at default, most of these settings are totally okay. There's just a couple of changes you may wish to make depending on how your website is actually run. But of course, if you have any questions about what we've done, please feel free to ask in the comments below.